Douglas Show. This is Monty Rock. And with us on today's show will be Linda Ronstack, Sal Minio, Frank Hopel and the Stompers, Willie Tyler and Lester, Joe Harnell and the Band, and Mike's co-host for this week, Ozzy and Harriet. And now here's Mike. Is it an earthquake or simply a shock? Is it that good turtle soup or is it merely the mock? Is it a cocktail, this feeling of joy? Or is what I feel the real McCoy? Is it for all time or simply a lark? Is that granada I see or only as very park? Is it a fancy not worth thinking of? Or is it at long last love? Is it an earthquake or simply a shock? Can it be the good turtle soup or is it merely the mock? Is it a cocktail? This feeling of joy Or is what I feel The real McCoy Is it for all time Or is it simply a lark Is that Granada I see Only Asbury Park Is it a fancy Not worth thinking of Or is it at long Oh, that cleared up my sinuses for three days, that last note. What did I do that for? I was gonna, gonna, uh, is it at long last long? No train, you know. Right? Well, I could have gone, is it at long? Vote for the last one. I vote. <laughs> you like uh, nice people, and and people that are interesting to listen to and to look at. So interesting to look at that they had their own television series for 14 years, and boy, that's some kind of a record. That's going to stand a long time for a comedy series. Here is Ozzy and Harriet Nelson. Welcome. To <laughs> That's a great. That's a great song, Mike. It not only sounds good to hear you sing it, but it's a good dancing song. I'm all out of breath. We've been dancing mm -hmm. to that. You're kidding. He was good. really going back there. Well, let's do give him another chorus. <laughs> 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 you haven't lived till you've seen Ozzy dance. Uh, oh well, now I got it. <laughs> come on, Ozzy. He does come on, Ozzy. He does an inverted time step. Get on the hockey puck. You said an earthquake. Go, Ozzy. That's enough. <laughs> How's it going? No matter how you coach, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> that's, that's kind of a sticky hockey puck there. Yes, Isn't it that? is. Yeah. There are days when people, you get these, these young kids that move a lot, and this thing starts to move, you know. <laughs> and they realize it's moving, and they say, hey, the whole st either the studio's moving or, or I'm moving. And it's cute. That's like the municipal <laughs> opera stage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In St. Louis. Oh, they right. have one. They have one like that. Only it's about a zillion times bigger than that. 
The that whole thing goes around. Place. Oh, that was a wonderful experience. Yeah, well, you know, it's nice, uh, uh, I think, to go out and meet the public because, as uh, Bob Ryan was saying yesterday, I think actors are basically, or entertainers are basically insecure, and they like to have the approbation of the public. I, I, I think so. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, don't you think that everybody really basically likes, seeks approval? Parents seek approval yep. of their kids, and, uh, and school teachers seek approval of the students, and the ministers. Uh, I know there was a story about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, wait a minute. Finish the finish. No, ministers <laughs> seek approval of the congregation, really. Oh, I see. There, uh, there was this minister who had a very small congregation in New England, and uh, he always wondered whether the people in the congregation really liked him. He was never quite sure. And uh, finally, he was taken very sick. He was taken desperately ill. And the congregation voted to pray for his recovery, 81 to 76. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty sneaky. <laughs> you miss not doing a show? Uh, a regular show? No, yeah. because we've been having so much fun doing all kinds of things. Like this summer, we were talking to the Municipal Opera. We were out in St. Louis, and that's been going for 51 years. And it's an extraordinary engagement. How it large seats, a house is it? it? Well, it isn't really a house. It's well, outdoors, and it, it seats 12,000 people. That's Would you believe it? That's a lot of people. And that's quite an experience. Just to, You know, it takes you two days to walk across the stage. It had 50-piece mm -hmm. orchestra. And what we did State Fair, and it, it had been a motion picture several times, but it has uh, never been done on the stage before. And they have about uh, 30 singing uh, young people in their chorus. They, they recruit them from uh, college music majors. Isn't the enthusiasm uh, oh, of those young just, kids just great. breaking into the business? You can't imagine what that's like, right. being and, around them. It just and rubs the, the dancers, off, it? Indeed right. it does. And they had a 100-piece uh, marching band came down the aisles. Oh, that was an exciting experience. 100 pieces? Oh, yes. In the first place, this stage has 250-year-old oak trees growing right up out of the stage. Oh, that's and nice. they had this farm set. There was a, a, a barnyard, you know, two great big barns, full-size barns, and the farmhouse with the kitchen and the whole thing. And we brought a car on stage, and the center of the stage revolves, like, goes around. And the, it took the whole truck and everything, and all of a sudden, it changed from the farmhouse scene. The lights dimmed. And this revolving stage ran around, and they just kept the spot on the car. And as the lights came up, a whole state fair moved in on stage. Ferris wheels, roller coasters, everything. Oh and from goodness. the top of that stadium, this high school band that had won all kinds of awards came marching down through the audience with the... 50-piece pit then, and I'll tell you something, it froze you to the really stage. It was yeah, so yeah. exciting. It was really exciting. It's yeah, all, all, uh, all outdoors. And the audiences uh, are what? All ages? Oh, yes. All yes. ages. All ages. Mm -hmm. all ages. Well, and it's been, it's been there 51 years. You did a sellout business, too, didn't you? Well, it was, it was very good. <laughs> we very, hope so. ex except for one thing, there was one slight uh, problem, and that is when it rains. Oh, yeah. And no, what do you do outdoors when it rains? You go well, ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> you, you, you go ahead until it, uh, unless it rains really hard. Now, we, we were rained out uh, one and a half times. I say we started the show late one night. Uh, in, in the in, rain. Right. But in Kansas Tornado City. Tornado warnings. Yeah, the, well, in Kansas City, uh, there's a, it's called the Starlight Theater in Kansas City. You usually go from St. Louis to Kansas City, and there's a Starlight Theater. And this was funny because during our dress rehearsal, there was, it was a tremendous rain. It really poured, so we couldn't finish the dress rehearsal. And so we were going to go on, and it, this is a pretty complicated production to do without a dress rehearsal, to just sit down and talk say, about yes. it. So then opening night... It really started to rain, and there were tornado warnings. How many people were there? Were so, there a lot of people there? Yeah, there yes. were about, uh, they sit there with umbrellas. Right. That holds it's about 7,000 people, and I guess about maybe five or 6,000 turned up in the rain with their umbrellas. So uh, they figured, well, if it's a light sprinkle, we'll go on as long as we can. And the dancers were warned to be careful and not fall down. Oh. And, and we were doing oh. this little number out on an island. Uh, right by the edge of the, uh, by the edge of the, by the apron of the stage. And we were standing out there, and I had my arm around Harry. And first of all, somebody was supposed to bring a little set out, a couple of chairs. We were supposed to sit down there on a table. We were supposed to sit down there and talk and, and then sing the song. And they forgot either that or maybe the stage hand said, I'm not going to go out in the rain. I, I, I don't know. But we got out there, and it wasn't there. So we were supposed to sit there uh, uh, reading a newspaper, so I put the newspaper over Harriet's head, and we were singing a romantic song, 
and I was standing out there, my arm around her, and it is raining now. now like, lightning what, what, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? I, I thought, the, the what light. am I doing? <laughs> I wish I were home. What do I need? Yeah, this we for? said. I said, here are these two <laughs> folks. They're grandparents. Here we are in Kansas City in a storm, and we're standing. And I'm singing a love song. Right. Uh, and, I don't forget and, that. And I got to laughing so. And Harriet <laughs> said, uh, later, what are you laughing? And it's funny. You've often heard people say, uh, this reminds me of a story. But this did remind me of a story. <laughs> that the, I know you know Ross Martin. He's been yes, he's, uh, producer. Uh, yeah, uh, wonderful. No, the... Uh, he's the, the, the oh, like oh, the actor. Know? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Wild Wild West. Well, that's right. right. Very and, talented yeah. man. And, and I had heard... Ross tells this story and... Uh, uh, this is what I thought of when I was standing out there. Uh, he tells a story of this old man in Vienna uh, who was uh, doing an act where he dove off the top of a high ladder. And that was the finish of the whole uh, little affair that they had down there, like a carnival. And this old man was standing up on the top of the ladder, and he climbed up slowly and slowly, and it was a windy, cold day, and he stood up there, and he looked down, and he said, isn't this an awful way for an old man to make a living? Wait a minute, repeat that line. Uh, we're just moving the boom in over here. All right. Okay. He said, uh, he, he was standing up, the, the, the old man climbed up on the top of this ladder. And he looked down at the people and he said, isn't this a dreadful way for an old man to make a living? He said, here I am, 75 years of age. I'm going to dive off into this little tank. Uh, 90 feet down there and I'll probably kill myself. But you paid your money to come in here. If that's what you want, I'll, I'll, I'll kill myself. He said, how would you like your old grandfather to make his living in this dreadful fashion? And the tears were streaming down the old man's face. And he said, is that what you want? I'll, I'll kill myself. That's what you want, isn't it? For this poor old man to kill himself. And they said, no, no, old man. Climb down. Please don't climb down, old man. And he said, thank you. My next show is at 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> what a great act that would be. Oh, that's marvelous. Yeah. My next show. <laughs> oh. You did a song in that show. Didn't he sing to uh, a hog? He, did. he sang a wonderful song. We call it the hog song. You know, uh, in, uh, in State Fair, Melissa and Abel Freight, this farm couple, uh, his whole life is involved around Blue Boy, this hog that he has raised to get the championship. And that's the ambition of his life. And he's so involved with this hog. We, we that, the song morning. was about it, that. It, it, we have yes, to do it now, yes. but we need everybody's help. Yours too, Harry. Oh, yes. yes. We have, yes. We're going to move a little furniture. Oh, I'm good at this. Right. Okay. I'm the yes. furniture mover. Now, right. I don't think you need me, actually, One, two, Mike. Three. Yeah. 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 You can handle it fine. Okay. Yeah, fine. Right. That's Over it. There. Over there. Easy, Harry. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Come on, turn. Yeah, all right. That's Mike. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's it. That's fine. That's all good. You get the thing now. Get this thing. Right over here. Yes, yes. Uh, fine, fine. That, that's it, Mike, if you just put this over here. Good? I, I didn't think we were going to have to do this when we were co-hosts. Pardon me. Bring him out, bring him out. Here's the... Uh, is this the right one? Is, or is it out there? Down, down here, here down here. Uh, Mike, uh, uh, that's it? By the back? Too far, a little farther back here. Sorry about this. Here. How about that now? Is that it? Is that get it? More? That's close. Good enough for a hog song, right? Right. right. And now, I, I tell you what happened. Mike, uh, this is a mock-up of the actual hog that we had. We had a, a little boy worked in an imitation hog. He climbed into, into this hog suit. Yeah. And, and it was quite a, and it was kind of embarrassing because it was so, done so realistically that people would say to us, uh, how did you ever train that hog so beautifully? And I was a little embarrassed to tell them that it was a boy inside the hog. But there's no boy inside this, uh, this uh, hog at all. Okay. Uh, okay? This is, I, oh, oh, out of context, this is a love song uh, to a hog. Kind of a romantic, touching moment, yeah, okay? I sing them all the time. All righty. Uh, fine, just a second. Uh, you don't mind if I sing to the other end of the hall, right? <laughs> I think that was a good move, Oz. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
friend, you're more than just a friend. Loyal, loving to the end. Sweet hog of mine, sweet hog of mine. Soft and warm affection lies in your teeny weeny eyes. Sweet hog of mine, sweet hog of mine. When the lengthening shadows fall and the day is through, you can always hear me call. Pig I know, sweet hog of mine, sweet hog of mine. Sweet, sweet, all my troubles. Appear when you oink oink in my ear, sweet hog of mine, sweet hog of mine. There's a, there's a certain sound that, uh, I don't care if the person is a music lover or not, when you hear it, you simply must tap your foot. And that's the sound of Dixieland music. Great. We have a group that has retained that old time music sound and that wonderful flavor. Here's Frank Hubble and the Stompers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Stoppers, and we'll be back right after this message. The last time this young man was with us, uh, the audience was so captivated by his performance, and when he sat down with his little friend, I, I, I found myself talking and directing questions and things to the to the little friend which is kind of spooky and then i saw the boom man harry i'm sorry i gotta say this moving the mic back and forth like this to willie and then to lester <laughs> that's how good this guy is willie tyler and lester welcome him, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, I'd like to introduce my partner, Les. Les. Hey, baby, what's happening? <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask you something. You are astrology nut, right? Yeah, buff. You're astrology buff. <laughs> yeah. Play on words, huh? No, really, I want to ask you. you. You want to find out my daily horoscope thing. My sign is Virgo. Tell me something about me. Well, pretty soon you're going to hear the titty tatter little feet around the house. You mean the baby is coming? No, man. Pretty soon the mice are going to start wearing shoes. <laughs> A little clean joke for you, folks. Start off with it. Hey, what nationality are you? Say what? <laughs> I say, what nationality are you? A black dummy, man. Don't you believe in seeing it? Get yourself together. Hey, I like, your, I like your watch. Like my watch, baby? That's right. Does it tell time? Huh? I said, does your watch tell time? No, man. You got to look at it. <laughs> Now you're a shake off or you're going back to the farm. <laughs> I want to ask you something else. I understand you left home at an early age, right? Yeah. Why did you leave home? Something my father said. Well, what did he say? Get out. <laughs> Man, I was so poor I had to move out of the slums. You had to move out of the slums? Yeah. Where did you go? The ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, don't laugh, man. This stuff's not funny to you. Oh, I mean, you know, don't do that, man. If you're nervous, just cry. Okay, what you mind? Yeah, so I got something else. You came from a rough neighborhood, right? Yeah, and then every time I walked down the street, everybody ran. Everybody ran? Yeah, but they never caught me. I was walking down the street one night. Well, better late than never. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, go ahead. You forgot what you gonna say? No, you were saying so. No, you, you had the line. Oh, uh, I was walking down the street the other night, man. This guy ran up behind me and he grabbed me. And what did you do? In no time at all, I had my nose punching away at his fist. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like you to do now what is called the extemporaneous part of this act. Uh, we'd like it, first of all, by... <laughs> Way of Time Machine we'd like, to take, we'd like to bring to you, by the way, tonight, the prehistoric caveman. Good evening, sir. How are you getting along? Hey, baby, what's happening? <laughs> hey, would you mind telling me something about, you know, what, what do you do? I mean, like, you know, standing around in a cave all day, what do you do? Oh, uh, man, I watched Milford yesterday, man. He fell into a volcano. Milford fell, fell into a volcano? Yeah, he was really burned up over that. <laughs> well, I understand you're going to get a hair transplant, right? Yeah, I'm going to get a hair transplant next week, man. You're getting a hair transplant next week? Yeah. But you've got a, enough hair on your head. Huh? You've got, a, you've got enough hair on your head. Yeah, man, but I'm get some ticket on my head and put it on my chest. <laughs> Everybody call me sissy, you know. Okay, well, can, one more question before I get rid of you, okay? Yeah, go ahead. Don't say it that way, man. No, wait. Uh, one more question I'll get rid of you, right? Yeah, fine. Now, what are you going to do tonight since television hasn't been invented yet? 
Well, I shot a wild pig this afternoon, so I guess I'll just sit around in the cage tonight and chew the fat. (laughs) 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 Charlotte Majority is getting louder. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Now, one more quote. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, right now, we'd like to take you back to the Knights of King Arthur. Now, I will play the part of one of King Arthur's knights. My partner, Lester, will portray the role of the innkeeper. The knight knocks at the innkeeper's door. Innkeeper! Innkeeper! Hey, you got to really play close attention to this, folks, or it'll tash you right back. Go ahead. <laughs> now, dig. Watch this, now, dig. <laughs> innkeeper! Innkeeper! Where you look, man? My horse, my steed is collapsed. I must have some type of an animal to ride on to get the King Arthur's Palace on. Do you have any type of an animal here that I can ride on to get the King Arthur's Palace? I can't help the baby. <laughs> but I must have some... Look, I can't help you, man. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Wake me up this time. I can't help you. But I must have... Look, the only thing I got is that big old dog over there in the corner. Very good. I'll take your dog. I couldn't do that. And why not? I couldn't let a knight go out on a dog like that. <laughs> Okay, a little on radius there. Okay, they got one, qu- one other question for you, and then we're going to get into the song. Yeah. Do you think, the, do you think, bless you. <laughs> he coughed. Well, bless you is just the same thing, man. <laughs> okay, well, can I, yeah. do you think that most people like see-through blouses? What? You better rephrase that thing, man. Do you think most people dislike see-through blouses? Only if they got bad eyesight. <laughs> we gonna sing a song. Nice, silly, you please lay it on. Here we go now. Sunny. Yesterday my life was filled with rain. Yeah. Sunny. Smiled at me and really eased the pain. Dark days are done. Bright days are here. My sunny one shines so sincere. Sunny one's so true, yeah. I love you. Thank you for the sunshine and hey, yeah. Sunny, thank you for the love you brought away. You gave to me all and all. Now I feel about ten feet tall. Sunny one, so do you? Yeah. I love you. Oh, that's a sharp outfit. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. What's, what's this? Is that for security? Yes, that's my pacifier, you know. Your pacifier? My pacifier. <laughs> you use it often? No, I don't get mad too often, you know. Oh, oh you only use that when you get angry? Yes, when I get mad. Okay, I see. You know, instead of breaking laws, you know, that's how to, you know, pacify myself. Yeah, I bet you look very innocent when you use this, too. Yes, and Mike, I got a question for you. All right, fine. How does it feel talking to a dummy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How does it feel? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike. Okay. Uh, you get, you know something? You're a fine, fine looking young fella. Thank you. You look pretty young too, fellow. <laughs> what did I just say? No, what did you just say for me? That's okay, don't worry about it. Hi, folks. Hi. <laughs> How does it feel being on the same show with two big stars like Ozzy and Harry? Oh, I love this. When I found they're going to be on the show, I mean, we were going to be on the show. Let me rephrase that. We were going to be on the show with them. Yeah, that's what you'd like to go. You are ready. You want to talk, man? Yeah, well, you, well go ahead, say something. <laughs> we don't sit there like a dummy. <laughs> no, we, uh, I, is it true that you were on radio first before the, the, the television series? Right, yeah, that's right. right. Did you grow up with the show, too? Yes, definitely. Right. Oh, that's nice. I was, I How about was, you, Lester? I was still in the woods then. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah. who does your hair, Lester? Uh, well, uh, Monty Rock does it every now and then. Yeah, he's yeah. on the show later. Yes, uh, yes he does uh, it. Did he fork on it today before he came on? Well, he didn't really have time. Now. He just said, go for yourself, baby. Mm-hmm. That's, the way, that's the way he talks, you know, go for yourself, baby. <laughs> did you tease it? Did I tease it? Yeah. No, I'm very serious with my hair. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Can the people hear out there? Honey, you know, I think maybe, maybe I'm listening. Did you hear what he said? I, <laughs> I said, did you tease it? And he said, no, I'm very serious with my hair. <laughs> Oh, that, that's worth repeating. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Willie, Willie, what do you remember most about 
Mr. And Mrs. Nelson. Actually, I remember. I remember. Let's see. It's Ricky, I think. And he would. He would say. I don't remember the saying. I don't mess around, boy. Yes. Yeah, right. This is the saying he used to say all the time, and it, it really stuck with me. And every time I'd listen to the show and, and uh, see the show on television, I'd always wait for those parts. Well, yeah, thank you very you much. Mean, uh -huh. Thank you. I saw the show too. That's nice. Yeah. Nice show. I did. Yeah. Did you get that outfit from Monty Rock? No, did Monty didn't get this. I got this hot. <laughs> No, show this expression, you know. Yeah. Do you have a special diet for Lester? Uh, yes, uh, what do you call that stuff? Uh, what do you call it? Well, you, you know. Oh, sap. Sap? Sap. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it hard to do, digest? <laughs> With me, it don't matter. <laughs> we'll be back with everyone following this. Yeah. <laughs> Our next guest is a very interesting young man. And the last time he was with us, I was away for a couple of days. But I know about him. He's made an international name for himself as an actor, and more recently through his uh, play, Fortune in Men's Eyes, as a director. And Ozzie and Harriet, I know that uh, you're both familiar with this young man's work. Yes, we know him. So let's all get together and greet Sal Minio. <laughs> There are, only, there are special people who get this kind of a reaction when you say their name. <gasps> and you get that. I look like Lester's brother, that's what <laughs> How is the play doing in New York? Fantastic, thank you. It's really doing very well. Uh, last time I was on your show, we talked about it, very briefly, in fact. And the surprising thing was that immediately after the show was aired, a lot of uh, women came to see the play and they said they had heard me talking about it on your show and uh, which is strange because of the the subject matter we were very surprised that this kind of thing would not so much attract that kind of an audience but that women would have uh, you know the guts to go out and see this kind of a, of a play excuse me for the benefit of those who may not know what the play is about refresh us will you basically it deals with what happens to a 17-year-old boy who's sentenced to prison and the mental and physical brutality that he's subjected to. Um, it does go on today and all of this uh, that you see on stage is an accumulation of factual things that have happened in prison. And it's pretty shocking, frankly. And, and I was very a lot pleased of publicity that, about it, yeah, about well, what's going on in prisons. As a result of the play, and I think um, uh, uh, this is one of the areas that I, I feel very proud of, is that aside from it being an entertaining show and it being theater, it's caused a lot of people to all of a sudden stand up and say, now wait a minute, is this actually happening in today's prisons? I mean, our, our kids, you know, kids who are sentenced to very minor uh, for minor crimes are exposed to this kind of thing, you know, being uh, sent to prison with men that are hardened criminals. And then the play is making the impact that you thought it would. It's causing that kind of reaction, mm -hmm. which is uh, is kind of exciting because you can't turn away from it. And when it, when mm -hmm. an actor and a good actor, because you're a very good actor. In fact, Thank all, all I can think of when I look at this young fellow is. The picture you did with Jimmy Dean, Re was it Rebel? Oh, Rebel, Rebel. Cause, yeah. Yeah. You and he yeah, were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Mike, I, I don't, I don't want to break into a serious discussion, but uh, Sal was up to Dave's house when that was a birthday party or something, and he told, uh, speaking about prisons, and Sal told a story that I never forgot, and I just remind him, I would, would tell it, wanted to tell, he's tell a story, so, so great. Well, I, it, strangely enough, I, uh, when I was ready to do the play, uh, to direct the play, I went to various prisons to, you know, get research. And of course, it was very depressing in the oh, beginning. Oh yes. Um, I went to San Quentin, and I sat in the cell with a man who had been in prison for 35 years. Strangely enough, as depressing as it was, he told the story to me. Uh, 
35, and he, years. 35 years. And, you know, when he told me that, of course, my mouth dropped. And he said, yeah, it's a long time, isn't it? The cell is about this big. And uh, they spend 23 hours a day in the cell. And one hour a day, they're allowed to walk in front of the cell. Now, mind you, with this kind of thing going on in his head, there was a sense of humor that he had. And he told me the story about this prisoner who was in jail. And his mother came to see him. And the mother came and she said, my boy, I don't understand you. You, I, you go out and you buy a gun and you shoot people and then you go rob. But what kind of a boy I bring you up to be? I give you a nice home. He says, hey, Ma, look, first of all, we're not Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a heavy prison safe. <laughs> you know, Ozzie and Harriet and I were talking about the generation gap. Do you, do you think it's beginning to break down? Uh, frankly, no, I think it's getting bigger. <clears throat> Somebody referred to it the other day, I re can't remember who, as a gulch. Who was it? Grady Nutt. Grady Nutt called as it a gulch. gulch. <laughs> generation gulch. Well, I, I think I'm very fortunate in a sense. I'm 30 years old. I'm sort you of right in between. Oh, you yeah. go to camp this year, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're on, the, you're on the cusp. You're on the ragged edge. Yeah, you're going to fall off. I don't know who's going to send me to one. But <laughs> uh, no, it's kind of a groovy age because I went through the 50s, you know, that era, which was a whole era in itself, and it's, it's changed completely. So, in a sense, I can still communicate with uh, the young generation, the below 30s, and still can sit and have a conversation with yeah. you and your own. That's kind of an enviable position, isn't it? Being in that position, I find that, that uh, no, the, the gap is much bigger. I think what's happening now is that the younger people have decided, uh, rather than trying to penetrate and trying to make older people understand, they're saying, forget it, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, let's yes them a bit and say, yeah, right, you're hip to us and you like our dancing and you like our music, but you really don't understand a thing. And so it's gotten to be a much wider gap and yet there's less overt gap do, do, do you know what I yes, mean? In other words, it's, it's a lot subtler now. We travel with different crowds because I don't feel that. Really? No. no. I don't understand some of the fashions I'm trying to, you know. But I, now, I, uh, days, I can't walk in and buy clothes like I used to. I don't want to be ridiculously silly to be so up with it. And I don't want to be like day before yesterday either. But I find with the basics, I really don't have any problem with younger people. I mean, I'm talking like uh, 18, 19, and 20. Because I understand what it is. It's, a, it's an honesty. It's a basic honesty that they're trying for. And uh, to use one of their expressions, I really dig it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, don't, don't you think, too, that uh, it's very easy from the standpoint of people who are quite young to look at the generation that has preceded them. Not only this present thing, but when I was a kid, and uh, later on as you move on and your own children look at you, I think it's always easy to see the faults of the generation that's getting a little bit older. And I think that that's Money what makes... Quarterbacking. No, no, I think that's what makes progress. Because I think everything is better today. The music is better today. The acting is better today. The kids are smarter. And by the same token, the next generation will take the experience of the preceding generation and build on that. I think there always has been a gap. But I think the one, uh, one keynote to all of it is that the young people of today have brought to our minds that enough of this hypocrisy, let's try and deal with the truth from here on in. Are the two age groups really being totally honest with each other I, I can't see I, I can't buy all of that I can, uh, maybe I do travel in different circles uh, uh, but the point is I don't travel in circles uh, I, I don't have a particular circle I don't think the honesty is what the newspapers and magazines make it out to be what the articles make it out to be uh, uh, I think that we have committed a grave sin by forcing the younger generation to have to suppress themselves with us and as a result um, 
we have split up into so many organizations. For instance, it's a proven fact now that violence does achieve the goal. If it weren't but for... it's wrong. I know it's wrong. I am opposed it's to so violence. Wrong. But it's a proven fact that when there is violence, uh, the blacks all of a sudden, because of violence, have subtly uh, are getting some of the, uh, their rights uh, in this nation. The Vietnam War, it wasn't the older people. It, by no way was it the older people who brought it out into the open. It was the younger people who had to go and demonstrate and have their heads kicked in. And now all of a sudden Life magazine will show <coughs> pictures of, of the Vietnamese atrocities. But it's the younger people that are doing it and we're forcing them into doing it in ways that, that uh, uh, have violent connotations, the demonstrations and all of that. They're the ones that are doing it. We're not out there demonstrating well, getting so, our you heads know, kicked. When you, when you say atrocities, you know that there are atrocities uh, being perpetrated upon our servicemen, too. You know about that, don't you? In any, of course, you know we that, should you not You know that small there. children throw grenades into groups of our so soldiers. Exactly, but war breeds war. Hate breeds hate. And what they've been trying to say is that it's not a matter of who is getting killed or who's killing who. The fact is we are killing each other. What difference does it make? Mm -hmm. Pardon me, you know, Mike, uh, the one thing I've, I've meant to tell, I've, I've often wondered, uh, as long as we're on that subject, I've often wondered, we are sitting down talking in Paris, or have been for the last year, whatever it is, to the Viet Cong. Now, the way the war can end is if Russia stops furnishing supplies to North Vietnamese, the war will stop within three months. I wonder why, since we have a quid pro quo that we could relate uh, to Russia with, why aren't we talking to Russia? Because uh, if that were stopped, I don't know why we're talking to the Viet Cong. We're never going to get anywhere there. But if we talk to Russia and Russia stops supplying the Viet Cong, the war has to die of its own, uh, of its own weight. It has to fall apart. I, 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 you've talked to a lot of people on your show, but yes. has anybody ever espoused such a thought? Mm -mm. Not that I can recall. We're coming right back. Sal Mignon, We were talking to Sal Menio and Ozzie and Harriet about young people. We have a, a young lady with us, and Ozzie, thank you for bringing her to our attention because I hear she's just great. She's got a new album called, on Capitol, called Hand Sewn. Her name is Linda Ronstadt. Make her feel comfortable. It's Linda Ronstadt. We'll be back as soon as we get some shoes on. Linda Ronstadt, we have a little time. I'd like to find out something about you, <laughs> uh, where you're from, and so forth. I'm from Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona. Uh, pardon me, Mike. I, I love the way you make your guests feel at home. Uh, yes, I don't. Look at you. I'll tell you something interesting. I said to Linda, it looks like you might be having a little toenail problem. It looks like iodine. She said, No, that's just shoe polish for my boots. <laughs> I didn't know. How old are you? Twenty-three. You're kidding. No, not. But you look like a teenager. Does that bother you? Did you look so young? It's bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> and he hasn't even got his shoes off. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you married, Linda? We no. don't have hot work. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get married? Not particularly. <laughs> Why not? Usually, you have any ideas? <laughs> uh, seriously, no, but usually girls at that age, that's, uh, they call that the frantic age <laughs> when they're not married. 23, 24, really. Well, they I think they do it out of loneliness mostly, you know. It's You're not lonely? Yes. I am, Are but you? I, but I think that's kind of a poor reason to get married. <laughs> what kind of a boy, if, if you wanted to get married, what kind of a boy would you want? What kind of a husband would you want? Barefoot? <laughs> well, mostly guys think they'd like to marry somebody just like their mother. Well, I'd like to have someone like my father. <laughs> oh, well, that's Who nice. wants to marry nice somebody like their mother? <laughs> I don't want to marry him, but... <laughs> what girl? What's your father like? He's really groovy. He's real honest and real, real warm and real sincere. What does he do for a living? 
He used to be a cattle rancher, now he's in the hardware business. Mm -hmm. My father was the cowboy. <laughs> you make your home right in Phoenix or out on the outside? No, Tucson. Oh, Tucson, I'm sorry, Tucson. You never say yeah. the word Phoenix. Mm -hmm. hey, what are you looking at? <laughs> What's wrong with Phoenix? We're going to get a lot of mail now. It's a big plastic city, man. It's really a drag. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Plastic, uh, Linda Ronstadt, R-O-N-S-T-A-D-T, -T, said that. You mentioned Phoenix. Not me. You know, for Phoenix being a very, it's rather small, wouldn't you say, a small city? They have more prisons in Phoenix. <laughs> you have a way of livening, livening up there. Sal's like no one I've ever seen, Sal. So Should we get some bars out here to make you feel comfortable? Do you know, when we closed the play in Los Angeles, and I really do have a fixation for prison, we closed the play in Los Angeles, we took the set down, and I hated to see the set go, so we moved it to my house, and now my house is a prison. <laughs> You just better be careful now. But you know, the interesting thing, what, what a groovy feeling it is, is that you're in this prison, and I really have like the bars instead of doors and things like that, but it's like when you can just open that bar and open that door, it's such a groovy trip. You're you really know? involved in this prison thing, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I know. But it is a problem. You know what? Go to Alcatraz and help them out over there, man. Well, yeah, they're, 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 they're doing something the Indians, about the prison The Indians are there, aren't they? You met there, How many? There's a bunch of them. <laughs> they There's took over. about they 500 of them. They took over? Yeah, I, my, my landlord's over there right now, as a matter of fact. Great, you can miss the rent. <laughs> Is that true? Somebody said that you said to Ozzy, gee, I'm so happy I'm here. Now I can pay the rent. It's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Oh, well, Linda doesn't have to worry about paying the rent. What will the government do, Linda, about that Alcatraz problem that you mentioned? Well, I sure hope that they, they just step aside and let them have it. Well, and, they uh, offered, the Indians offered them a prize for it. They offered them $24 with a glass of beads, I think. <laughs> and, or our uh, scalps. <laughs> I, I'm not a political person, right? I'm, you know, I'm not. But you don't I'm, look like a politician. But I'm <laughs> I'm interested in, uh, in their way of life, you know. In other words, they're really fighting at this point to maintain their existence. They don't want to be absolved, absorbed, I mean, into the white and middle class society. They really, they believe that their way of living that doesn't upset the ecological balance, you know, mm -hmm. is, is the, the true way that humans should live, you know, and not mess up nature. And, you're, um, you're part Indian, aren't you? Yeah, I am. But, I no, I'm not, listen, I'm not enough Indian to go running around waving my tomahawk and saying, wow, man, stick up for the Indians. Because, but, that is a but I think that they should. I yes. think that everybody should. You know? I've got a grandson, a couple of grandsons who are part papoose. <laughs> yes, yes uh, David wife June's is wife, is wife is part Cherokee. It's part Cherokee. I mean, in other words, I didn't have to struggle my way up on a reservation, you know, or anything <laughs> like that. I grew up in a nice warm house, you know. But um, but those people did, and and and, and what they want to turn that into a cultural center, you know, and so that they can teach the rest of the people in the world their way of life and their ideas. And I think that it should be done, you know. Mm -hmm. And if they're not using that land, man, a lot of bad stuff went down. I mean, that was a prison, you know. And you know what he said about what it's like in prisons. Yeah, people, Linda, people are. I don't. I, I mean, I'm listening. I'm listening to everything you say, but people, I'm sure, are beginning to wonder. Why don't you wear shoes when you perform? Oh, wow, well, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer this week is... Um, <laughs> this week, this week, or this moment? This week is I got black shoes and brown shoes, and I, I wear purple dresses, and they don't match, you know. And, and I really don't like shoes because they, they look stupid and they feel but uncomfortable. But if you could get purple shoes, would you wear them with that outfit? Purple shoes look ridiculous. Yes, but that, you're not answering my question. Oh, you could take one of these colors. If I could get purple shoes, I wouldn't. You wouldn't wear purple shoes? No, oh, man. Besides, I mean, don't, don't wearing shoes all day make you feel grumpy. Don't you just really hate Maybe it? Maybe that's my problem. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel great right now. I feel, like I'm on a, I feel like I'm on a picnic. You know what she could do with that purple dress? Go up in the grape country and do some stomping in the bare feet. In the yeah. earth, you, know? <laughs> you know what I was going to do? I was going to try an experiment. I was going to say, you know, a lot of people watch this show. People in factories and sh uh, I have some friends in Brockton where they make a lot of shoes. I was going to say... They're all designed by sadists. They want to torture us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, needless to say, I'm not going to say anything now. <laughs> no. S&M's coming in pretty heavy. <laughs> what do you, what do you feel, why do you feel you like to go without shoes? What, what is really your reason? Are you inhibited in <laughs> I shoes? I told you, man, I just never felt motivated to buy any shoes that went with this dress. I own two pairs of shoes. Uh, I own one pair of shoes and a pair of boots. And I wear those with my jeans, you know, except in the summertime when I don't wear shoes because I don't need them. 
And, uh, well, uh, well, look, woman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you sing, sing another song for me so we can pay our rent? Okay. Uh, 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 Linda Ronstadt. Uh, Before, before we go on, Ozzy and Harriet, I want you to know that the function of a co-host is to conduct interviews and help me conduct interviews with, with other guests, you know. And uh, I'd like you to talk to our next guest, Ozzy and Harriet. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> because he's a nightclub performer and a very controversial person who uh, always has something going for him. In fact, he's the only, the only thing predictable about him is that he is unpredictable. <laughs> and and I, you want me to interview him? Yes. yes. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Monty Rock. Mr. Nelson's going to conduct the interview, uh, Monty. Well, now, you're using that phrase rather loosely. But, you know, I've seen Monty before on several shows and enjoyed his performing and so forth. And, Monty, they told me that they would like me to interview you. And, and uh, I had a whole bunch of questions about his far-out image and his wild clothes and all. And uh, here we have a young district attorney comes no, walking see, in. We're talking about a generation gap. I was the first legal freak. Uh, <laughs> I was the... Uh, I was the first. I was the first one. No, I really was the first freak to uh, give a card? appear on television with no talent and make money. And uh, Mercury Records. Do you want a bet? No, really. Mercury Records put fifty thousand dollars in me and lost it, and they still haven't forgiven me. And I now have the great problem of being, I guess, the most misunderstood human being going. Oh. Really, I, I've been fired. I was fired. When I was here last time, I was very happy. I was going to Las Vegas. You were talking to Vegas. I got thrown out of the show because they said I took off my clothes. I didn't take off my clothes. I just danced. Uh, you mean the dance of itself was so salacious, per se, it that it looked like... They said it was moral. Moral? Moral. Immoral, I guess. Oh, oh, okay. uh, uh, what I found out about Vegas is that it's not my kind of town because I'm, I'm from the streets. You were talking about the generation gap. I'm, I'm not 30 yet, but I come from the streets. I'm Puerto Rican, and, and I was brought up. I left school in the eighth grade, and I knew what was happening pretty young, baby. And uh, well, what was happening? Uh, oh, nothing, was really, nothing, nothing was happening that ain't happening now, except I believe that the young people of today don't have mileage. You have to have miles. Before, you know, people take LSD, people take drugs, but they have to have miles, because what are you reviewing unless you're old enough to know what you're reviewing? Anyway, that's my trip. That's right, right, right. Yes, you know, you know something. I, uh, now, I know that you've kind of wrestled around. Uh, I know from your background, because I've heard you on other shows and so forth, and I've read about it, that you were formerly a hairdresser, yes. and that also then you, were, you came on with a real far-out image, a real wild, mad image. And if I may say so, I think that you've reached now just a really fine image. Because but you're going to buy me. Oh, well, but, but, <laughs> no, but you, but you haven't What's maintained the going this price? <laughs> yeah, you haven't maintained this particular image long enough. Uh, because this is what happened in Vegas. You see, really? Vegas hired me. Vegas hired Did me. Did you get a lot of money there? I got a lot of money. They still owe me the money. Uh, uh, <laughs> but here's what then happened. You didn't get they expected money. me to have long hair. They expected me to. They thought they hired a comic. I had the greatest range. Milton Seltzer arranged my show, Who? and I, Milton Seltzer was my conducting oh, arranger. Yes. I know his sister Alka. She's cool. <laughs> And we got out there, and I, I wanted to give everybody a whole scope of my performance, but I, I hate to tell you this, show business people, I'm not putting them down, but they're hypocrites because they came to see my show, the truth, um, Mike. They came to see my show and they, they, this kind of thing. What show business people? Yeah, well, mention some, I'm at least people give us initials. Are, people, what is show business people mean? Recording stars who are as good as their last record. You see, I, yes. I am now going to do my first album um, between four companies asking for a lot of money. I don't trust anybody unless they got money. <laughs> But uh, I got to tell you the truth. It's, it's the first time in my life that I'm, I'm trying to tell the world, not the world, the people that really love me. A lot of people out there really love me, the real, real people, because they know that I'm bull. I mean, that, uh, 
that I'm, I'm just like they are. I'm just trying to get somewhere. And when I find out where I'm going, I'm gonna tell them. <laughs> Yeah, but you realize, realize you're laughing at your own material, Monty? I hate it. No, 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 Monty, the only thing you said a moment ago, the only thing that's nobody, nobody's uh, calling you, right? For, for work. Well, and yet, uh, they tell me that when they try to reach you, that you don't have a phone. I don't believe in phones. You don't have a phone? Do you think maybe that's no. the reason why no. you're not getting any phone calls? <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, I was, I was under the care, I really, this is the truth, I was, I don't know if you know by a psychoanalyst, but I flipped out once, and I tuned in, you know. You, you flipped out and yeah. tuned in. You see, I flipped out, I, I had long hair, and I was looking in the mirror, and it wasn't too groovy, and I went out. And I went to this doctor, the truth, and he told me to get rid of the phones because, you see, I, I'm told a... Told you to get rid of the phones? Because I was always getting phone calls, and I was going everywhere, and I was trying to be a starlet, or trying to be one of those goofy people. And, you know, New York City, where I love, at one time, it was what discotheque you went to. You know, it was like that kind of trip. And right now, I'm, I'm just living alone without a phone. My, my manager, who God bless him, has ner he has Elsa now since he manages me. Uh, you don't has, have any of this problem. You don't have no, Elsa. I don't have an Elsa because I don't have a phone. But I, <laughs> the truth is the truth, Mike. But I, I can't be with a phone because I get nuts, you see? And this way, when they want me, like you wanted me, a telegram comes, and then the boy comes down up the stairs, then my manager calls me, you know, and that's how it works, but it works pretty good. Well, it's just like a guy that was, a guy was uh, uh, typing, typing away, and another fellow came around, he looked, and he said, man, he said, you, you've got no paper in the typewriter. He said, no wonder I'm not getting any answers to these letters. Can I just, can, can I give you this, can I, can I say this? <laughs> Be back, my next show oh, is at no, five. I haven't, got, <laughs> I haven't gotten over that yet. No, can, no. I, can I say uh, this? Yes, and I, and I, last time I was in a show, I told you that I was very thrilled about Las Vegas, and I, I really did a good job. I just was, they weren't ready for me. Uh, but but you, you told me you're going back. I'm going back for double the money, but they don't know what they're getting. See, the guy, they fired me, I swear, everybody. This is show business. The other place how, fired how they, me. How does a Las Vegas place fire you? What do they do? They came to me and said to me... Who, who, who came? It's a couple of people? One no, person? one of those bang guys, you know, bang, bang, uh, came up to me and said, hey, man, uh, you better get out of here in 24 hours, you know? And we packed up and split. I even left my jewels there. I had to go back and get your, them. Your jewels? I left my jewels because I stick them under the bed. I'm Puerto Rican. Uh, <laughs> 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 and I was, oh, Where do you put your money? Do you keep your money on it? I shouldn't no, say that. No, my money is handled by a company that I own. But uh, the truth, they fired me. They fired me. And uh, another hotel wanted to hire the act that they fired. You see what I mean? But now I'm becoming a singer. You see, I got, I'm going to become a recording star. Dig yourself. Because <laughs> I'm gonna. Be, my name of my album is called Whoever Wants to Hire Me. It's called, <laughs> it's called without without a phone. No, Monty Rock sings. Man. Is that Seltzer fellow gonna do the arrangements on the album? Listen, I trust him. He he's a great conductor because without him, I would still be Monty Rock, whatever I was. And uh, he's a groovy guy because he taught me to do the meter. You see, I mean, I have no meter. I can't even read. You see, I've read the names in the show. Yeah. I got a Puerto Rican accent. I'm trying to know how to speak English and be like the rest of the fools. Phonies, you know. Yeah, with, uh, speaking of the media, they want to drop a couple of quarters in the, in the coin machine. So we'll be right back after the commercial, oh, okay, Mike? Oh, fine. fine. <laughs> I <just do> <laughs> Honey, I want to make sure we save time for, for your song, but there, I heard something about a nude picture of you. What, it's going to be in Life magazine? What is it? Uh, well, no, uh, uh, they, they had no publicity on me at the hotel, so I thought the best way to get promotion was to put this nude of me on a cover of, of the Las Vegas paper. And the hotel, being so moral, they took the newspaper out and all the girls are ready to serve you with their things hanging out. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting you on. I'm not putting you on, man. These, they hired those girls on, and uh, you know what they did to me? They took the magazine out. You're, me, you're handling this interview, Mike, oh, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the girl with the bare feet had come back. <laughs> but it was all right because uh, I found I learned a big lesson. What was that? Don't go for the laughs. Don't go for, no. for the laughs. Try, try to give the people. You know, you should. People should know what's in your head. You gotta, I, you've got to be honest when you. Yeah, you're but I was so honest. I told the people that I told them, and they were. And, uh, <laughs> 
I would sit there. There was Joey Ross ran through the lobby. Joey Ross, that guy from Cough. He said that kid has flipped out. He ran through the lobby. And another comedian, I want to mention his name, had a nervous breakdown watching my act every night. Why did he come in? He's such a masochist. But I would tell the audience, you know, I'm schizophrenic, neurotic, terribly insecure. But what is your problem coming to look at it every night? Right. Don't, don't, don't you think, though, uh, Monty, if, if you are heckled, and everybody who's ever performed gets heckled, don't you think sometimes if the, if the answer to the heckling can be something that sort of draws the person to you rather than puts down the other person? Yeah, but off the streets, works I have to say, mm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it, my background comes out. Yeah. Uh, uh, sp speaking of your background coming out, I, I, no, no, the, well, you covered that, didn't you? Yeah. No, no, not quite. No, no. Uh, I, I understand you have a, a male model uh, yes. agency, is it? Uh, I'm, I'm with Ford Men. I'm seventy-five dollars an hour, and I did Benson Hedges. I'm also now the Jello Man, and I'm, I'm, I'll do anything for money. <laughs> Why not? I tell the truth. Money. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's <laughs> Would you do the song? Oh, I'll sing the song. Okay, yeah. Money okay. Rock's gonna sing for us. I walk the lonely streets. I watch the people passing by. I used to smile and say hello. Yes, I was such a happy guy Then you happen to This feeling that Possesses me No, I can't fool myself I guess it all Just had to be I can't see nobody, baby Miles can't see nobody else Miles can only look at you I used to have a brain I used to think of many things I'd watch the fallen rain And listen to the sweet birds sing Don't ask me why Oh no, I love you And that's all I can say I left you such a long time ago But in my mind you always stay I can't see nobody, baby My eyes can't see nobody else My eyes can only look at you Every single word you hear, girl Is coming from this heart of mine I've never felt like this before a love like yours So young and fine Don't ask me why Oh no I love you and That's all I can say I left you such a long time ago But in my mind You always stay I can't see nobody baby My eyes can't see nobody else My eyes can only take this opportunity to thank uh, Linda Ronstadt who was out earlier and Willie Tyler and Lester Sal Minio, and Monty Rock thank you very much you were mar you're marvelous all of you this was a fun show I enjoyed it it was it was a lot of fun and Ozzie and Harriet who will be back tomorrow the rest of the week and right now we have Frank Hubble and the Stompers to take us home Frank <laughs>
Transportation and other considerations for the Mike Douglas Show provided by National Airlines. When you think of Florida, think of National Airlines. We turn Florida into an airline. Transportation provided by Chevrolet, featuring the Impala Sports Sedan. Luxury and performance in a big car. Get on the move with the big one of the Chevrolet 70s, Impala. Guests of the Mike Douglas Show stay at Philadelphia's Warwick Hotel. Thank <laughs> you.